Eritrea, an East African country with an estimated population of 6 million, has been a hotspot of human rights violations since last three decades. Since its inception in 1993, Eritreans have been facing atrocities and brutalities by their authoritarian government, which resulted in mass exodus from the country. Switzerland has become one of the main destinations for the Eritrean refugees, who enter Europe through Lampedusa Island. Since the beginning of 1999, Switzerland has revised its national asylum law 26 times, either partially or totally. As the Demig policy database shows, those revisions have been increasingly characterized by a more restrictive approach towards asylum policies, approach which has strongly impacted the fundamental right to seek asylum in particular that of asylum seekers coming from Eritrea to Switzerland. To understand why this has been the case, it is important to first understand the legal status that can be granted to asylum seekers, and what that entails. After having applied for asylum in Switzerland, an asylum seeker will generally fall in one of four categories. Granting of asylum. Temporary admitted refugees. Temporary admitted foreigner. Rejected asylum seekers. Asylum seekers who receive a B permit are people who have convincingly demonstrated that they have been persecuted in their country of origin. What this basically entails is that they have been recognized as refugees under the 1951 Geneva Convention as well as under Swiss national asylum law. Differently from any other European countries, Switzerland then makes a distinction between recognized refugees, permit B, and temporarily admitted refugees, permit F. Temporarily admitted refugees are asylum seekers who are considered refugees but they are not eligible for asylum in the sense of the Swiss national asylum law. Thus, being considered a refugee in Switzerland does not necessarily lead to being granted asylum. This category includes people whose refugee status came about only when leaving their country of origin. This, for example would be the case of dissertation, that is when somebody has a well-founded fear of being, be permit temporarily admitted refugees, persecuted in their country of origin because they left their job within the armed forces without permission. Just like temporarily admitted refugees, temporarily admitted foreigners receive an F permit. What those categories have in common is that F permit holders can stay in Switzerland as long as there are legal, or humanitarian reasons preventing deportation. As a matter of fact, an F permit is not a real permit of stay but rather a confirmation that a deportation cannot be carried out. In the first case, it is because deportation could risk persecution upon arrival. Instead in the second case is because deportation is either impossible, unlawful or unreasonable. But, as soon as the obstacles to deportation are no longer there, the Swiss State Secretariat for Migration will set a deadline by which the asylum seeker must leave Switzerland. On expiry of the departure deadline, the asylum seeker loses his slash her right of stay in Switzerland. From this point onwards, the person will be considered as an illegal migrant, thus risking to be persecuted in the criminal justice system. Ultimately, if an asylum seeker is judged as not having a well-founded fear of persecution in his slash her country of origin and no obstacles to deportation were found, then an expulsion order will be immediately issued and the asylum seeker will have to leave Switzerland. Until 2012, Eritrean asylum applicants who claimed grounds based on desertion were systematically recognized as refugees, Permit B, in accordance with the 2005 decision of the Federal Administrative Court which ruled that due to political reasons the punishment for conscientious objection and dissertation in Eritrea is unreasonably severe. Persons who have a well-founded fear of being subjected to such punishment shall be granted refugee status. After this ruling, the number of asylum applications increased and Eritrea became the top country of origin of asylum applications in Switzerland. This increase did not go unnoticed and the issue of asylum slowly rose to the top of the Swiss political agenda. The Swiss People's Party, a right-wing anti-immigration party, was the first to take on the issue of Eritrean asylum seekers and it was soon followed by many other parties. Data-driven journalism was able to analyze the political rhetoric surrounding this topic by adopting a qualitative content analysis approach. 
The results of the research revealed that the public debate has grown in quantity over the years and with that, at the same time, the tone of voice has become increasingly hateful to the point that the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, in its 2014 concluding observation on Switzerland, declared, among many other things, its concern and I quote over racist stereotypes promoted by members of the right-wing populist parties and sections of the media, in particular against people from Africa, asylum seekers and immigrants. Therefore, it was precisely in this climate that in 2013 Swiss citizens were called to vote on a government's proposal to revise the entire asylum sector. Liebe Stimmbürgerinnen und Stimmbürger, Cari elettori, il 9 giugno 2013 siamo chiamati a votare sulle modifiche urgenti della legge sull'asilo. Le modifiche costituiscono una tappa dell'ampio processo di ristrutturazione del revisione. Infine, la revisione precisa che il rifiuto di prestare servizio militare e la diserzione non costituiscono di per sé motivi validi per il riconoscimento dello statuto di rifugiato. Ultimately, the revision was approved with 78.4% in favor and 21.6% against, with a 39.43% of voter turnout. Accordingly, the 2005 Asylum Appeal Commission's decision was overruled with the new revision of the Asylum Act. What this replacement meant in practice is that, from that point onward, Eritrean asylum seekers who left their country because they refused to perform military service or have deserted would not be considered refugees under Swiss asylum law. Nonetheless there is to say that, despite the phrasing, it is still possible for an asylum seeker to obtain refugee status on the basis of refusal to perform military service or desertion because judicial authorities in Switzerland are obliged to comply with the 1951 Refugee Convention. The Center for the Defense of Migrant Right explained that the new paragraph has primarily symbolic and dissuasive value. It reflects the political agenda of the powerful actors who dominate the public and parliamentary debates in Switzerland. Regardless, this incident was just the first of a series of legislative transformations of the Swiss asylum sector targeting non-citizens. In both initiatives, the Federal Council and the Parliament advised to vote against what was proposed, however, ultimately it is up to the citizens to decide whether the amendment will be approved or not. This is the result of the Swiss's political system of direct democracy, which gives Swiss citizens an influential voice in politics. Citizens are called many times during the year to vote on popular initiatives, in other words instruments that allow any eligible Swiss voter to amend the federal constitution as long as a minimum of 100,000 signatures are collected and as long as the proposed initiative is in compliance with international law. If they fail to do so it is the responsibility of the Swiss Federal Assembly to declare the initiative invalid. In 2014, the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination urged Switzerland to introduce an effective and independent mechanism to review the compatibility of popular initiatives with the state party's obligations under international human rights law. This request was the result of the committee concerns over the xenophobic tone of popular initiative targeting non-citizens. Since the publication of the 2014 concluding observation of the committee, it seems no progress has been made in this area. In its 2020 alternative report, the Swiss Center for the Defense of Migrant Rights CSDM, stated Switzerland's lack of progress since the committee's concluding observations of 2014 is striking. Of particular concern is the situation of Eritrean asylum seekers which has worsened dramatically in the wake of the Swiss Migration Authority's radical change of practice in 2017 to 2019. Indeed. Not only there have been major legislative activities targeting non-citizens but also the Swiss Federal Administrative Court, which constitutes the last judicial appeal in Swiss asylum procedure, between 2017 and 2018, changed its practice towards a more restrictive approach when dealing with Eritrea asylum applications. On January 30, 2017, it ruled that, illegal exit from Eritrea is, per se, no longer sufficient to justify the granting of refugee status more elements are necessary. On 17 August, FAC ruled that Eritrean asylum seekers who are likely to be exonerated from serving in the national service, would not risk being detained nor would risk being drafted for national service if they were to come back to their country of origin. Thus, assuming there would be no risk for them upon arrival, international human rights law will no longer constitute an obstacle to the deportation order issued by the Swiss authorities. On July 10, 2018 Federal Administrative Court ruled that the risk of being recruited into national service would not constitute an obstacle to non-refoulement principle. Under international human rights law, the principle of non-refoulement guarantees that no one should be returned to a country where they would face torture, cruel, 
inhuman or degrading treatment. Following these rulings, the number of Eritrean asylum seekers granted the less advantageous status of temporary admission permit F, increased. And being given a temporary admission status F permit, instead of asylum status B permit, has major impacts over the rights one can enjoy while refugees granted with asylum enjoy all rights set out in the Refugee Convention. Temporarily admitted asylum seekers face several limitations. Between February 2018 and September 2019, the SEMRI examined the status of approximately 3,000 Eritreans already granted temporary admission as foreigners in light of the Federal Administrative Court's change in practice. As of the end of October 2019, SEM found the temporary admission no longer to be valid in 82 cases or 2.7%. This 3,000 uh, case, 3,200 cases um, led to a great number of people who have been asked, who have been actually ordered to return to Eritrea. So this once again causes the harm that we were talking about. And more concretely, uh, they are in the emergency aid. So it includes that they do not have what they, all the rights that they used to have, whether it is on healthcare or emergent or on the housing aspect. But more uh, gravely, uh, these people don't have any more access to the labor market. Even if they had a prior contract with an employer, that contract is uh, revoked. Um, and also, if they were pursuing an educational program, then here again, they, are, they must be interrupted. And there have been many employers who took the side of uh, Eritrean, the Eritrean uh, employee, who really lobbied and advocated for, for them to have, again, access to, um, to, to, to their job. Uh, also because they had invested and that's what Switzerland has always been asking uh, integrate take into, take into consideration all um, people on the labor market and don't discriminate and there you go that you have employers doing it and uh, the state interferes and prevents them from keeping their employee so that also created a, a great a huge impact on the mental health of uh, Eritrean who have been subject to, to this uh, law. And, uh, and they're basically in this gray zone. Uh, not on one side, they're not able to return to Eritrea because there is no readmission uh, agreement between Switzerland and Eritrea. And on the other side, uh, they are considered as illegal in Switzerland, so uh, they cannot um, they cannot work, they can, they can only basically rely on this emergency aid uh, of 8 to 12 francs depending on the canton that they live in. And this aid is not meant for people who stay here for a long period of time. It's meant for a very short period uh, of time. And uh, Eritreans are not going to leave in six months or in a year. Uh, the situation in Eritrea, as we know, is very critical and it's not going to stop anytime soon unless a miracle happens uh, so it's a it's a very problematic approach and um, and it's now up uh, to the hands of it's in the hands of the European uh, Court of uh, Human Rights. Swiss reports uh, the recent Swiss reports have been very much biased because they have, Switzerland has been connecting uh, its uh, foreign relation um, policy with, with its migration policies. And that often, of course, uh, gives you a lack of independence because you're trying with your migration issues to solve the migration issues that you have uh, regarding a specific community and on the other hand you're still trying to have a line of communication with the Eritrean authorities and these are two conflicting um, approach and and two conflicting issues uh, from the Swiss uh, side. In conclusion, the position taken by the Swiss authorities towards asylum seekers cannot be justified as the current country of origin information published periodically by the European Asylum Support Office. 
point towards human rights violations nor it is justified, if we take into account the problems with obtaining reliable data, as a result of the fact that Eritrea has been under a militarized authoritarian government, that has not held a national election since its independence from Ethiopia in 1993.